Well, good morning. Let's all stand together and worship. As we do so, I just want to share a scripture with you to just kind of get us in the, in the right frame of mind to accept what God has for us. Second Corinthians 4, 8 says, For we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we do not despair. We have been persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We've been struck down, but never destroyed. Today, let's worship like that. Despite the fact that we've been crushed, let's worship like we've never been abandoned. Amen? Amen? Let's do it, church. You 
are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Just as I am, just as I am broken, just as I am beaten, just as I'm depressed, just as I'm scared, just as I'm unfaithful, I come and thank you, Lord, for that amazing love.
powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, we declare your name is power. It meets us right where we are. In the midst of anything, whatever we're struggling with, whatever we're fighting through, God, Jesus, you, you come, you show up. Your spirit rises up within us and we feel you. We know you passionately. Thank you, Jesus. We claim healing. Whatever, God, this building is full of people that need you. No matter where they are in their walk, trying to figure out who you are, <laughs> just barely got to know you and trying to just walk every day, remembering that you're there. adolescence where we're learning a little bit more every day to just find ourselves deeper in you. God, and those in maturity, <laughs> that even though people may say you're mature in Christ, <laughs> you still struggle every single day. To let go of our selfish ways, to let go of the things the world wants us to see as more enticing than you. But nothing, nothing in this world could ever match your glory, your grace, your mercy, your strength, your joy, your unending patience with us. It amazes me every day. Thank you for this time, God, that we were able to stand in your presence and worship. And thank you for the time moving forward as we worship you in your word. God, I just pray right now that <laughs> you have gone before us. You have prepared this place for us today. Every person here is not here by accident. They have walked in the doors of this building because they desire to know you. They desire to hear your voice whether it through a song, God, that touched their heart, whether it just a melody that they felt your presence, or God, through your word, where they're going to learn more about you. They're going to know who you are. They're going to want to share with everybody around them. So God, I know you've prepared Chris's heart. You have worked with him through the week to speak life into all of us. Thank you for opening our hearts, giving us ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts to receive the very words you have for us today. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Amen. Isn't that wonderful to know that just as you are, you can come? That's why I come with my Nikes. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to MPC. My name is Christian. We're so glad that uh, you've joined us this Sunday morning. If this is your first time with us, I want to welcome you. Uh, if I didn't get a chance to uh, meet with you earlier today after service, come on up and, uh, and say hello to me. If you didn't, just know that uh, we are blessed by you being here. If this is your second or third time back, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Let me uh, just mention a couple things first and foremost. 
Uh, if you're a lady and you need to use the restroom, please don't use this door. Go out to the foyer. Go to my left, your right, and the ladies' restroom's right there. We keep that door uh, safe and secure and for your privacy. Uh, gentlemen, you're right over here to my left, to your right. No big deal. Go in there. Do your stuff. Anyway, if you need parking, I know most of you guys already found the parking, but if you need parking next time you come out, right across the street, right next to the yellow building, you're going to see that there's a whole bunch of parking, 70 spots that are open here for the people of MB, uh, MPC. I was going to say MB, NBC, but no, we're not NBC. We're MPC, Mesa Place Church. Uh, also here shortly, we're going to pick up our tithes and offerings. If this is your first or second time with us, please don't feel obligated to give. If this is your third time with us, guess what? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> no, please don't feel obligated to give. Why do people say that, right? If this is your first or second time, your third time, you're, you're in. But anyway, uh, if, uh, if you call Mesa Place your church or your member uh, of the church, if you need an envelope, go ahead and raise your hand. One of the ushers will get a uh, 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 giving envelope uh, for you. A couple of announcements. If you want to hit the announcements, they're up there already. They're going to be up there here shortly. There they are. There's announcements, and then there's the announcements here on the chalkboard. So everybody get your bulletins. Put them in your hand, every single one of us. Look at the front of it and look at the bulletin items. It's really funny that um, we write those things down, and then people call me and text me. It's like, when is the uh, youth event? Believe it or not, it was on the bulletin. Anyway, so... Look at the first one, February 1st. We're going to have our Revelation uh, Bible study. That's led by Pastor Christian. He's a really nice guy, super handsome dude. Uh, you want to come out at 6 p.m.? They're going to be right across the lot in the blue building. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. You should really meet him. Nice guy. Uh, that's going to happen this Thursday. The following day is the Ephesians Bible study. That's led by Robert and Lori Wrinkle. Yeah, so if you need more information, go ahead. Raise, raise your hand because people don't know. Uh, that is uh, in the book of Ephesians. And then on Wednesday, uh, the 7th, uh, Allo, um, Aaron's wife, is going to be giving her testimony. So we're praising God for that. So be in prayer. Uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. So you want to come out Wednesday, uh, the 7th, at 7 p.m. for that beautiful testimony. Also, a couple things that are not in your bulletin, and that is the Toby Mac concert. That's going to be March, what is it, Paul? March 10th, if you want to sign up, this is the last week. There's a sign-up sheet right there in the back where Mike Pickett is. He's waving it up in the air because he just don't care. Uh, there's the Toby Mac sign-up. So go ahead and get that if you guys want to be included in that so we can all go together and we can yell at Toby Mac uh, all together. We can say, hey, it's MPC. And we can, they, he can go like, oh, check it out, it's MPC. But anyway, so that's going to be March 10th. And then also... Uh, he's our uh, missionary. He's going to Southeast Asia. If you want to sign up for his information that he'll be sending out and keeping us posted, please do so. And there's uh, those uh, cards back there as well that you can put up in your home and you can pray for the his, and his wife. And so you, you want to be in prayer for that. Amen. I think that's all the announcements we have. I have a couple more uh, when we start the, the service, but I think that's about it. Why don't we continue to worship? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, it's so awesome to come and worship you. There's a song that says that if the rocks cry out, I will too. Tell you what, Lord, I think we're louder than rocks. Father, we're the only thing in your creation that bears your image. All glory and honor are yours. And so this morning we give that back knowing that it's you, Father God. It's all about you. The tithes and offerings, they're yours already, Father. We pray your blessings upon those that are giving this morning, Father God, and those of us that are struggling in that area, Lord. Guide us. Be with us. Father, we thank you that this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is uh, Christian. I'm so happy that you've joined us this Sunday morning. 
If this is again your first time with us, maybe you came in right after the announcements, you didn't get a chance to maybe come up and, uh, and meet me, uh, come on up after service. If you get a chance, if you don't, please don't feel obligated or anything like that. Just know, please, 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 how uh, joyful we are that you've joined us. I want to thank now our team uh, for helping us on Wednesday. Uh, some of y'all don't know, we went to the UTEP BSM, that's the Baptist Student Ministry there on campus, and we fed about 90 students. I want to thank uh, Shamali Buick GMC, uh, they gave us some stuff, and uh, HIA uh, Insurance, they gave us uh, some stuff to, uh, also. Full disclosure, the pastor uh, kept the cutlery, so you can tell Raul that. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to give the students that. They were, they were Ginsu knives. They were Ginsu knives. They were going to throw them at each other anyway. Anyway, and uh, of course I want to thank Chick-fil-A uh, for making, all these companies for making it such an awesome time to be out there with the UTEP students. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Miss Melissa. She's just sitting down there. Mr. Manuel, uh, Esther and Manny, and uh, Patty Logston for going out and helping us to serve the students. They did an awesome, awesome job. I also want to thank our Radiate team. Uh, we had just a, an awesome, awesome time with our leaders and helpers and our students. I want to thank Alexis and Adam. He's out there somewhere. I want to thank uh, Aloe. She's taking care of the babies. And Paul, uh, Sinceri. Uh, those are our leaders. And I want to thank Manny and, and uh, Melissa yeah, for going out and helping. We had an amazing time at the fountains with the scavenger hunt. We lost five children or five uh, teenagers, but they all came back home. So that's really cool. Uh, we had an amazing time there at CC's Pizza to finish up. Now, um, you know how we do happy birthday, right? I say happy birthday, and then you guys clap to you. I want to say happy birthday to my son, the guitarist, Dominique Garola. Happy birthday to you. Woo, wow. He is now 20 years old. Yes, yes, I am that old. Now, we're not going to watch movies, okay? So don't think that I'm about to watch, we're about to watch movies. But I do want to watch, I uh, want you guys to see these two videos back to back to set up today's message. Go ahead, Mr. Greg. <laughs> to receive seeing god around in everything life's ticking on and on we're just passing gotta know where you're going when life stops gotta grab my bible what should i do looking at the king james staring at the message gotta make my mind up which version should i Saturday, I barely made my curfew, curfew We, we, we couldn't go to sleep We so excited, we gonna fellowship Sunday Would not promise Monday and the rapture could come Tuesday afterwards Wednesday we'll go to church again Oh my! Church is so fly. so fly, I love it all, I can never say bye. say bye From the nursery where all the babies cry To the praise song that I have to buy right. Kids church and the go fish snacks mm -hmm. The youth when we make purity packs True love waits, Sunday is the best Every other day is wet It's Sunday, Sunday Gotta get church on Sunday Everybody's looking around for the Bible verse For the Bible verse
Bien. A sense of urgency. We are on a looming deadline. It's gonna be a late night. Well, what is the Sabbath, right? Is the Sabbath like that video, Sundays, we're all pumped up, wasn't that awkward to see? Coming to church? Or is the Sabbath like that lady? We're in our series titled 10, and today's sermon, the fourth commandment, that's 10, is what we're going to see this morning and today is the last of the first four commandments. And remember, I've been saying throughout this series, almost mistakenly, that the first four commandments, I've been saying, deal with how to deal, how to approach God and God's holiness. And that the six that follow deal with how to respect God's creation. Now let me just say that I think this fourth commandment in preparing and studying for today's sermon, that I think this one deals with God's creation and how to respect God's creation. And I hope you can see how that is possible by the end of today. So let's dive in. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and take them out. If you need a Bible, go ahead and raise your hand. One of the ushers will get one to you. If you have a smart device, you can go ahead and load that up. If you need the Wi-Fi, we have the Holy Spirit and Wi-Fi, and there's the code. We're going to be in, the, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. Exodus at, is at the beginning of the Bible. I thought I'd help you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. Now, let me just kind of say this first. Some of us mistakenly think that Charlton Heston is the one that gave us the Ten Commandments, right? That Moses is the guy that comes down and gives us the commandments. No, he's the second guy. The Lord God Almighty is the one that spoke the Ten Commandments first. I know there's some controversy there because some people think that you know, Charlton Heston came down and so he might have changed some of the Ten Commandments to make it a little bit easier or something like that. No, 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 no. The Ten Commandments came straight from the mouth of God to Israel. This is God speaking. That's why it's in quotes. So God is saying to Israel, and he says to you and me still today, he says this. Check it out. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Holy here means dedicated to God. Keep it sacred. Six days, the Lord says, you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the, sa the Sabbath day and hallowed it, meaning he honored it as holy. And this is the point on the Sabbath. 
It's a very important one to consider this morning. The Sabbath is the first thing. You may want to write this down. It's the first thing in God's creation that God set apart and actually reflects creation as it being good and rested. It's the first thing he does that. Now, let me just ask a question for you to kind of think to yourselves, to ponder. Everybody do pondering. Do you think God needs a rest? Do you think God needs a day off? Well, of course not. Of course not. And that is the point today. A day set apart. And so I want to share with you four points with you on the Sabbath to help us understand this Sabbath thing. So first in your outline, first, the Sabbath was made for people. <laughs> it's made for people. That is, God made this seven-day week and said, one day I want you to separate it <clears throat> and keep it as holy. Now, this is incredibly cool to think about on so many levels. I can make this fourth commandment into a two-part sermon. It is so rich. It is so rich. I'm going to try to condense it. So let me give you some highlight points for you to take with you about this. If you need some additional space to write in your outline, go ahead and raise your hand. The ushers will get you a blank sheet to pass out. Uh, I mean, so you can not pass out, so you can write on it. <laughs> Don't pass out, please. That would be awkward. Okay, notice there in verse 10 what the Lord says. He says, in it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. Did you see that? You see, God says to you and me on this day, Sabbath, don't work. Teach your kids, your servants that are with you, your employees. Bless your belongings with rest and teach your guests. In other words, you observe and in those in your care, or better yet, listen up, you don't and don't let anyone in your care make this day unholy, the day of rest. That's boom. Boom. Some of you didn't see that coming. Listen, listen. The word Sabbath means rest. And here in establishing a day of rest in creation, check this out, is the first notice to us as humans, here we go, of God's plans to save us. In saving us, having true rest. Every week we get this reminder of what's in store. Isn't that cool? How come he didn't make the week ten days? Four days, seven. Keep that in mind. Check this out. Adam and Eve, right? They sin, right? It's a beautiful apple, I guess. God, who is all-knowing, knows this is going to happen and sets up this day to help us understand rest, right? Because they, and even some of us, let's, let's, let's be honest, we don't have a clue what rest is. But getting back to sin. And so God says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, you don't have to go there, that he, meaning Christ, would be wounded for our sins in order to provide the way, in order to fulfill the plan for rest with God. And the restoration plan begins with understanding and recognizing the Sabbath in order to get to know, check this out, in order to get to know God better. How do you do that? Check this out. Listen, listen, listen. By giving us the fourth commandment to set up a time apart as holy to observe a Sabbath, to take in rest in the Lord, in the Lord. So that, listen, listen, so that we can relate with God who from the beginning wanted us to be in full fellowship and glory with God. It was God's plan for always for us to be with him. We're the ones that messed it up. And so how do I know that? Glad you asked. Because we humans are the only thing in all of creation that is created in God's image. Booyah, boom, shagalaga, get a clue. You see, we as Christians, we represent now that as humans, our hearts now are under His care, are under the Lordship of God Almighty. Those of you who don't know Christ, you're off the hook. But the rest is for us. The rest day is for believers. Those of you that aren't, you're off the hook. But we got some teaching to do, don't we? 
So if you're a believer, the Sabbath is for you. It is created for people and specifically for us believers. We can and should use it, Sabbath, to help those that aren't under the Lordship to start to understand what does rest mean? Augustine famously said, our hearts are not at rest until they rest in you. Because in hell there is no rest. So first point, Sabbath was made for people. God didn't need it, right? God doesn't need rest. Second, and, and this might come as a shock, but, but this is where things get a little bit complicated about Sabbath and messed up. Here we go. Second, the Sabbath is not the Lord's day. <gasps> Pastor heresy. Here we go, baby. The Sabbath is not the Lord's day. I was going to put in the bulletin, the Sabbath is not the day you go to church. It is not the day you honor God. I was speaking to my wife, Selena, about this point. She's getting ready. She was getting ready to teach the kids to get the teachers ready. She does an awesome job, doesn't she, next door? And, and how this point here has caused me, this one point caused me as your pastor to really search the scriptures and to review my go-to guys, the John MacArthur's that I go to. And yep, the Sabbath day is not the Lord's day. And, and so before I get to the point, l let me tell you how off the mark we've made this point and what I mean. You see, I am, as a pastor, I'm a part of a $71 billion industry church in which, listen to me, we have divided what we can and can't do. Let me explain. You see, many of us, me too, by the way, we were taught that Sunday is the day you set aside to honor God. Raise your hand if you were taught that way, right? Amen. Let me directly quote from one of my go-to guys, John MacArthur, on this. This is big. I really respect this guy. Directly quoting. There's no Sabbath law given to Adam and Eve. Nothing is said about this day of worship. It doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't prescribe anything for anyone. It is isolated completely to God. He completed his creation, satisfied with it. He ceased, constitutes rest. And the third verb there is he blessed the seventh day. He continues, also, there is never a command in the New Testament to keep the Sabbath. All ten commandments are repeated in the New Testament some numerous times except the fourth commandment. It is never repeated in the New Testament, not one single time. Wow. You see, let me boil all this down. You see, some church traditions meet on Saturday, right? 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 And some of us, like us, we meet on Sunday. And in so doing, we have caused the congregations to believe that it is the official day, the right day to go and worship God. And if you don't, oh, man, you are sinning. Right? What would you do today? I went to Albertsons, and then got my hair done, then I watched the Cowboys. You didn't go to church? Woo. Right? I remember when, when we started going, doing churches on Saturday, remember? Oh, you're not really going to church. You just got the message. Remember, listen, listen, listen. We just saw that the Sabbath rest was made for man. Now, the Jew worshipped on Saturday, and Christians picked up the tradition to worship on Sunday. Because that's the day that Jesus rose from the grave. Hallelujah. So then in church history, tradition, to the new converts coming to the church, the tradition was to celebrate and also make a statement to show that they had changed and changed the official day. That was customary. But that's it. That's it. There's a Jew of Jews. His name is the Apostle Paul. And he knows his stuff. And check out what he says in Romans chapter 14, verse 5 through 6. One person regards one day above another. Another regards every day alike. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. See, we've made you feel bad. Verse 6, he who observes the day, the Sabbath, 
He who observes the day observes it for the Lord, and he who eats does so for the Lord, for he gives thanks to God, and he who eats not for the Lord, he does not eat and gives thanks to God. <laughs> the point is this. It isn't about a day of worship. Paul is speaking about food, not because he's hungry, but he's making the point between Jews and non-Jews. Food was a bigger dividing line than it is on the weekends, which we've made it. Okay? Okay? So am I saying that we should not observe the Sabbath? Uh, does the Sabbath have a meaning? Or is it kind of like the tonsils or the gallbladder? It's not really needed, needed. Right? Well, let's look at Exodus 31, 13. Let's see if it's needed. But as for you, speak to the sons of Israel. That's what we're doing, right? We're teaching. We're learning. Is someone going to learn something? Say amen. Saying, you shall surely observe my Sabbaths. How come you didn't say Sabbath? <laughs> For this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies. This day is for you. It's for you. That's like mama's personal day. You know what I'm talking about? This is for you. Translation, when you honor the Sabbath, you are honoring what God did and is doing for you. Oh, man. I know some of you are scratching your heads. Don't get lost. Don't get lost. Hang in there. Next point is going to kind of bring it all together first. The Sabbath is for us. Second, the Sabbath is not the Lord's day. And third, oh, boy, here we go. Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. See, y'all didn't catch that. Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. And you can add there, get ready, you can add, and every day of the week. This is such an important point. So you can understand the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. It is not a day of the Lord. But in this commandment, there are some things we are not to do. No work. And so what man did, what religion did, was we went to the extreme and said, in essence, this means no manner of work at all. That'd be kind of good, by the way. But remember, it is a day, it is a time to observe what God did. And is doing by setting aside a time to remember God's holiness. And so the Jews, they, they started making all these regulations pertaining to work, right? You, you can't work on your fields. You, you, you can't even brush your teeth or whatever. No, so on and so forth. They went to the extreme. Check this out. One day Jesus, he's out with his boys, his disciples, and they're hungry. They're, they're out walking in the middle of a field on the Sabbath. And the disciples, they're, they're going through the field and stripping some kernels and eating. Mm, that sounds good right now, right? We'll get there. Anyway. And wouldn't you know, some religious Pharisees are right there seeing this whole thing. And straight away, they go up to Jesus and challenge him. That's considered work. Stripping kernels. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus tells them to remember. Remember? Remember your dude, King David? He entered into the house of God. And he and his boys ate consecrated bread. And then he says, and the very priests that serve at the temple, they're working on the Sabbath, and neither is that recognized as sin. And then look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Oh, here we go. But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here. He's saying that to us. Something greater than the day is here. But if you had known this, what it means, I desire, not a sacrifice, compassion, your heart. The Sabbath is about the heart. Not about what you go and do here. Great when you do that. 
Had you known that, you would not have condemned my boys, the innocent, my disciples. Check that out, verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Change that. Lord of rest. You see, the Sabbath is a time of reflection. That's what the Sabbath is. It's reflecting on God's goodness and God's provision. It's not about which day. Okay, okay, listen, listen, listen. The Sabbath was celebrated at the beginning on the seventh day. In the Hebrew, check this out if you want to write this down. The word seven is Sheva, S-H-E-V-A. And the word for, check this out, promise is Sheba, S-H-E-B-A. It's a promise. Every week of rest. Jesus is saying, Sabbath helps you relate, understand that rest. True rest comes from me, Jesus, and not a day of the week. I'm the promise. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus says, I came not to abolish the law, but to what? Fulfill it. It's being fulfilled. Jesus is the promise. He's the Sheba and the true rest, the Lord of the Sabbath. Boom. Christ is our rest. Because he is the one that is our provider. In Exodus 16, when Israel had been rescued from God, they're given manna from heaven. Okay? Let, let me explain to you what's happening there. God gives them a rule. He says, five days a week, gather up enough manna for that one day. On the sixth day, get twice as much. Now listen, 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 listen. On any day prior to that sixth day, stay with me. Had they gotten more than what they needed, it would spoil the next day. It would spoil. But on the sixth day, they were together for two days. Why? Because God was showing them and us today. Observing the Sabbath is recognizing God is the sustainer. You see, we go home, right? And where it's like, well, I still have to do the laundry. I have to do this. And then you feel guilty, right? Because it's Sunday. It's Sunday. Sunday. Pastor said it's Sunday. You see, here are some reasons people don't observe Sabbath, right? People stay busy because of their egos, right? People stay busy as a, as a cover-up for their laziness. Oh, no, 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 I got to do stuff. People stay busy because greed. People stay busy because they're more concerned about pleasing men rather than God. Is he your sustainer? And so as Christians, we take a day, yes, to honor God and what he did for us and what is in store, eternal rest in God's glory with the Lord of the Sabbath. Can I get an amen? amen? So first, Sabbath is made for man. Second, it is not the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. And third, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. And this final point, fourth, having a day of the week to rest and worship is essential and biblical. But pastor, I thought you said, stay with me. Having a day to rest and worship is essential and biblical. Sometimes those days aren't aligned the same day, by the way. Check out Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Here we go. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together. I love it. As some are doing. Right? Instead, you're like, thank God I came to church today. Instead... Let us, check that out, encourage one another all the more since you see the day of the Lord is coming near. Now listen, I don't want you to think, I don't want you to leave here that I'm trying to change history or say that Sundays aren't a good day to come worship. By no means, by no means. But what I am saying is that this commandment is for man, for us, it's for you. Make it personal. Christ is the Lord of your Sabbath. Christ is the Lord of rest. And that is and has been the Trinity's desire for us to rest in Christ. But don't think that it's the only day that Christ gets the glory. That is the only day to give Christ glory. Heck no. No, 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 no. Christ is Lord every day. That is the point. Not just on Sundays. That's why tomorrow we start messing up. I also want you to realize that Christ, as Lord of the Sabbath, came to this earth to establish the church. 
died to sanctify his church. Listen to me very clearly. The church has a place to roll in the Sabbath. I have given my life to Christ in service to his church. So please don't misunderstand me this morning. But let me give you four points about the church to help you understand why we need to come to church and how that impacts observing and understanding the Sabbath. First, we come to church because Christ established the church. Christ established the church. There are some people I've talked to, ministry leaders, that have told me there is no reason to have the church anymore, to go to church. Listen, I come to church because Christ established it. Check out Matthew 16, 18. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, you see, Pete had, ju had just, in the, in the prior verses, said that Christ, you're the Son of God, you're the Messiah. Not that he's the first pope. So he's giving that information. He says, I will build my church, and the gates of Haiti will not overpower it. Ooh-wee, that's big. You see, we come to church, you should go to church, because it is what Christ established. But also notice, it is at the church that the gates of hell will not overpower it. I mean, to tell you what, I see Satan working all sorts of things, all sorts of people, all the time. And the place that it does not is the church. That's where it is stopped. It is stopped. Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'm there. That's a boom shagalaga, baby. Tell you what, I need a little, a little rest from Satan's attacks. And when I'm with you guys, oh, rest. So first, Christ established the church. Second, the church is where we get encouragement. The church is where we go for encouragement. Look again at that Hebrews verse. Let us continue to meet. Why? Why? To encourage one another. In Acts chapter 2, it's a beautiful scene of the first church coming together, encouraging one another. Let me read it to you, starting in verse 44. You don't have to go there. It says, and all those who had believed, that's, they're now Christians, were together and, all, and had all things in common. Baby, this is the first university, diversity and union. How? In Christ. Verse 45, and they began selling their property and possessions. You can make it out to Mesa Place Church. And were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. You see, the church is a place to meet physical needs, which is in part our tithes and offerings, which is in part why we team up with CPS or, 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 or Patty Parsons or, or Vicky Maestas. This is what we do. We come together as encouragement. Verse 46, day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple. That is learning. I don't know why some people say, you can't go to church anymore. That's ridiculous. Anyway. And breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness, sincerity of heart. Ooh-wee, they're having potlucks. Ooh-wee, like that. They're Baptists then. Verse 47, we're Baptists, by the way. Praising God. Worship. They were singing. Why do they have to sing? Praising God and having favor with all people. Check this out. This is the best part. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Christ established the church. The church is where we gather to get and get encouragement. Third, I'm going to say it. I'm going to go back to my old ways. Avoiding the church is a sin. Did you know that? Avoiding the church is a sin. Avoiding it. Not missing it. And this one should be a no-brainer, right? But then again. Listen. If Jesus left heaven, track with me, to come to the earth to heal and to save the lost and establish his church, his gathering then if you are willfully avoiding the gathering, the church, you are going against what Christ came to establish. That's all there is to it. I've heard comments. I love Jesus, but I hate the people at the church. <laughs> Pastor, I, I love your church. It's so hip and cool, but you have people there. I'm just kidding. They haven't said about, not about anybody. <laughs> right? 
Or, Pastor, I like the teaching, but I don't like the music or interacting with the people. Let me give you a widely known fact. It's widely known. In heaven, the only humans that are going to be there, guess what, are church people. Did you know that? Did you guys know that? In heaven, there's only going to be church people. I'm too busy. Is it because my kids, my kids, I heard this one. I don't go to church, but MPC is my church. Does osmosis work for them? What are you saying? See, we come together to celebrate the Sabbath rest from our sin. We come together to learn about what the Lord of the Sabbath is encouraging us in his word. And then we encourage one another. Now, in a group this size, I know because of illness or other issues, some cannot. That's okay. But the fact remains, avoiding it, willingly and habitually avoiding the church is sinful. You don't have to keep coming here. That's okay. Just go to church. Just go. And besides, there are seasons in our life that sometimes you just can't make it. It's just a season. Just a season. But I'm talking about willfully avoiding what Christ came to establish. And he gave himself out, out of love. Come on, man. Look at this last verse. Psalm 90, 12. Teach us how short our life is so that we may become wise. Teach us. So we can become wise. It's the church. See, part of Sabbath is remembering where we came from. Deuteronomy 5.15, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Remember that you were a slave to your drug addiction. Remember you were a slave to the porn. Remember you were a slave to sin. And that the Lord your God brought you out by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. So how do we do that? Like that first video? Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> it's all about Sunday. Uh. Or is it kind of like that second lady? Sabbath. How should we come to the Sabbath? Your Sabbath is a declaration of God's creation. That Lord God Almighty, you are Lord God Almighty. And you're asking me to rest. Some of you feel bad for resting. I, I, I lost it this past Sunday. I need to, I need to share with you. I just wanted to rest. I just, I just wanted to go to the movies and go to rest. And I just, I got really mad at my daughter. And I, I'm sorry for that, Neha. But we shouldn't feel bad for resting, even as a parent. Sabbath, when you take in your Sabbath, when you're resting, just remember the manna, that he's the one that provides. Think of Magdalena, that one day you're like this, and the next day you're with illness. Does he need to put you in a bed so you can remember that he's the one that provides? Sabbath, when you take your Sabbath, it is, I'm dependent on you, Lord. I'm dependent on you. See, most of us, when we go into our Sabbath, right, you know what we start doing? We start going, oh, I'm praying for the business, and then I'm praying for the health of my kids. Lord, thank you that you're the one that takes care of me. That's all I'm going to, sh shut up, shut up. And Sabbath is a declaration of humility. Lord, I can't. I can't. I can't. I just can't. I know I'm really good at making casseroles and all that, but Lord, I, I just can't. Just, I humbly. Last Sunday, I know we went long. <laughs> Sorry. Apologies. 
we, we, we viewed, before you go worship the Lord, how's your speech? How's the vanity of your speech? Are you speaking ill of God? Are you just saying stupid stuff? Vanity of speech. Vanity of action. How's that for Sabbath? What's your actions on your Sabbath? Lord, I'm giving you 15 minutes. Go. Yeah. How about vanity of worship? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, worship is, is seeing God as God is. Sabbath. You're God, man. It's your, it, it's your exclamation point the seventh day that you made the earth. And I'm like, hurry up, the cowboys. It's okay, the cowboys are out. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> Second, the Sabbath. You got to see yourselves as you are. La regué, I messed up. And then seen as we should be. A creature worshiping his creator. You know, there's 24 hours in a day. 24. You guys are cramming 36, 48. 24. See the Lord every day? How much time are you giving him in that 24-hour day? Divine appointments. Throughout scripture, there's divine appointments. The one that screams to us is every Sunday. Screams to us. That divine appointment. To believe, rest, trust and worship so I, I hope you can see and I want to apologize as a church leader if we ever made you feel guilty for the Sabbath but the Sabbath is just stop are you stopping by just stop say Lord how great you are the Sabbath was made for man Every day, just stop, stop. Looking unto Jesus, in Hebrews it says, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. How great you are. made you feel bad for not coming to the Sabbath. It's every day, just shh. This might not make sense. Cal Ripken Jr., I know he's a baseball player. He says, as long as I can compete, I won't quit. That's baseball. Just take rest. Every day, just put, just Lord, your king. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this day. That we've made this day anything other than holy. We've made people feel bad and discouraged people. Oh, you should have gone to church. Why did you go to church? When we should invite them to come and worship and and share what true Sabbath is. It's resting in God who saved us. We humbly come before you and say, Lord, give us the rest that we need. We've got deadlines to meet and kids to feed and clothes to buy and wash. But Lord, help us just to stop and give you honor in our lives. For you are the Lord of the Sabbath. And we've made you the punchline of our week. And unless we're wrong, you're Lord every day. So Father, I just pray that you would help us to understand that. That our Sabbath is a promise to us that you scream from eternity's beginning. That you want us to rest. And that you will provide for us in that rest. 
It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, thanks for coming out here. Take some time just to rest and honor your God. Be blessed. Have a great week.